Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you the Yaesu FRG8800 software. Um, and this software has been, uh, it's not written by a company, it's written by a, an, an individual person. Uh, we can see the details there of who has actually uh, written this software. And it is very, very, very good software. Um, I've got a USB cable connected to the CAT output on the Yaesu 8800 radio and it actually works fine um, one thing i will say is i originally had some issues with this um, not with the software more to the point with the cable um, i originally bought a prolific chipset cable and it just would not work at all so i ended up switching to a different um, cable which works straight away and um, we're all in and working so to set it up basically what you need to do when you plug your cable in you've got this option in the bottom right hand corner called com um, and what you do in there you can go in there and um, basically set the com port up so you can see in there we can select the available com ports i've got com4 selected the speed of the radio is always 4800 it's eight date eight data bits no parity and two stop bits remember all these are different from default so um please make sure you've got these um set correctly and the way you can actually check um what com port it's actually plugged into because it's usb um the way usb works it gives it like a if you're used to the old style com ports the nine pin things it gives it a com port number um the way you find that out is you basically go into um control panel and then you go into system Actually, the bit we want is device manager. So, sorry, not system. Ignore that bit. Totally ignore me. The bit we want is device manager. So we go into device manager. And within device manager, you'll see com ports, ports, com and LPT. Um, and in there, you'll see the available com ports. So what you're looking for is something that says, assuming you've only got one device plugged in, USB device, you'll see something that says something like USB serial port. Now, um, it's got no caution by it. It says the work device is working properly. And the chipset that I've got that actually works is the FTDI chipset. As I said before, I did use the Prolific chipset and it didn't work. Um, it it installed okay there was no yellow little caution by the side of it or anything like that it appeared to be working but it just wouldn't communicate with the radio at all and as soon as i got a ftdi cable plugged it in straight away it worked interestingly enough um the same issue i had on the laptop as well so i don't know if i just got a faulty cable or or what basically so that's the com port settings and settings up so you open the software and all you need to do to connect to the radio is you click the cat on button. So we click the cat on button and we're now connected to the radio. So any frequency changes I do here will be displayed on the radio. Um, the only thing I will say, this can do a lot, this software, but the only thing it can't do is adjust things like the volume and the squelch and the tone and things like that, um, which is kind of annoying in a way because... Um, you know, you've got to walk back over to the radio to adjust those. But I feed mine back through the PC so I can um, sort of adjust them through the PC as well. So this is how you use it. On on the top bar here, we've got the modes. The got AM narrow, AM wide, LSB, USB, um, carrier wave narrow, carrier wave wide, and FM narrow and wide as well. And depending on what mode you're on will depend on whether or not, you know, they can um, function and things like that as well. My um, radio has got the two meters module in it. So if I switch to something um, on two meters like Hubnet, um, I can use FM. Now, these are what I've got here. These are memories that I'm showing you here. The one to nine bit of memories. I'll come back to those. Um, a little bit later um, so top right here we've got an analog clock and then below that we've got a digital clock um, below that we've got frequency band here which will just basically if you click one of these buttons it will just jump you to the bands i think it just picks a random frequency on the band or something but yeah there you go it'll just take you to the band anyway 
um, and then you can click around from there. So that's what that um, frequency band option does there. Uh, we've got this option here, frequency SW, where you can manually set the frequency. So you can type in the frequency. So if you wanted 7 meg there, I think I've just typed in 7 meg, you click manual set, it'll take us down to 7 meg. Uh, I want 7 um, 100, let's say manual set 7 100 so that's the a bit where you can type it in but and then below there you've got the comport settings you also got these two bits here which say preset frequency one and preset frequency two um i'm not really i don't know why you've got two of these i'll, I'll be honest um not, not entirely sure myself why you have two of these but they are useful nonetheless because you could basically type in a frequency there or using the up and down arrows um, and as soon as you click one of these it's activated so you can see on the left i've got the seven meg band detected and if i just wanted to move up in the 100 meg blocks i can just click it like that and then on the right hand side you can see there i've got three meg selected so if i click that again i can go up like that which is okay um it, it's not too bad I like the feature, I don't really know why you've got two, but there's probably a logical reason um, for having those two. It's just two different options, I suppose, for different people to switch between things. Um, you've got this box in the middle with set VFO and copy, swap, copy. I've not used that, so I can't comment on that little bit, that box there. Um, and then below you've got the VFOs, the memory set, the mode set, the message set, that all should just be set to enabled by default anyway. So the next bit I wanted to come up with is the tuning dial. Um, yeah, um, you can like kind of like drag it. it. Kind of goes a bit crazy on its own, and I don't do this uh, myself, but it just kind of like moves around. Um, <laughs> so that's not the way that I do it. I'll, I will enter the frequency that I want to go to manually, um, or I'll use memories, or I'll use, um, you see how here you've got the the less than and greater than sort of little symbols here um these will allow you to scan through the memory not through the memory sorry through the band which is the most useful bit of it so if i wanted to scan the seven meg band like that um, i'm on fm but i can switch straight away to am if i wanted and there you go i can scan and you've got, also got this fast and slow option so if i keep clicking fast it'll scan faster and if I kick slower, it'll scan slower, which I like. It's good. I like that. Um, and you've got this little thing in the middle, which I thought was like a button. I don't know what it is. little red thing. And if I wanted to stop it, you have to click the lock button. Now, I don't know if there's another way of doing it, but that's how you stop it. So you've got step up and down. And that's the, you'll notice there, the kilohertz um, is changing. Um, based on the mode that you're on, you can go in 1 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz steps. Um, the only thing, the only downside, the only downside about this software is to do with the tuning. For me personally, other people might find it's not a problem. So if I'm leaving it like that, let's say to scan through, um, and all of a sudden the station's found, I think I find sometimes I'm missing the lock button. You have to hit the lock button to stop it, and I'd be I wish that lock button was that um, like red thing below and it was a bit bigger so you could hit it because sometimes you'll just leave it and you'll be like doing something else and you'll fly your mouse back and you, you'll hit something that you don't mean to hit and you know what I mean it's you, I tend to just sit sit in front of it and watch it um, scanning now so I can you know when it when I find a station I can just click the lock button it'll stop pretty much straight away and then um, you can like go backwards and forwards very slowly um to tune it a bit better but that's the manual tuning and the uh, scanning on it um and like i say again i, I do like that uh, it's only the um dial bit i'm not not too keen on personally okay let's jump over to the memories which again is brilliant um you've got up to i think it's 100 memories um and you've got it shows you the first nine and but you've got memory up and down to get to the other memories there so that's how you change the display um, for the memories 
and these ones you can actually change so you can see here i've got i've just put some in to basically test it so the way you do it if you want to um, change these uh, you click presets and it brings you this up here um now thankfully there is all there when you get it uh, when you download the software there's some examples in there so you've got an idea of the format that it needs to be in so if you're looking at something like 20 meter band 7 meg um it's 7 you know 0330 for example you know um and if you want 14 meg it's 14 23000 you know sstv um on usb mode so basically what you can do here you can enter the mode you'll see on the top bar there changes when you click one of these um so let's just uh, click something like 145 800 there. Um, so it's ID 9, which is the memory number. And then you've got the preset frequency, which you've just got to put in the right format. Um, the mode um, as well, you've got to enter in the correct format. So it's got to be in a three uh, digit format. So it's like FM narrow there or USB or whatever it is. Um, you've got a preset button caption, which is like a short description of the... Um, what it is so i've got some like repeaters saved there with a brief description then next to it you've got the comments box where you can put more information you know so you could put the repeater name gb3sv then you can put gb3sv stafford or wherever it is or whatever in there as well um you've got this option here again with a call sign database i've not used that bit there so i can't um can't comment on that um but what once you've done something in there remember to click the save button let's say the new data will be saved okay and then you can um, just you have to press the exit button okay so that's how the software works so from a personal point of view um if the um, author of the software is um, is watching i mean this is just my personal point of view i love the software it's brilliant it works perfectly if if i was good enough to write the software myself which i probably couldn't I would change the dial. Um, I would probably have something there with bigger buttons or something, you know, and a bigger lock button. Um, that's what I would do personally. Um, and maybe a way to change the skin because not everybody will like the layout, you know, the, the skin on there. So maybe something um, where you can pick a couple of different skins or something like that. Um, and the other bit I would probably like, but um is so you can actually expand it bigger than it actually is so you could have it full screen now i don't know how it would look full screen um maybe it's because of how it's laid out it needs to be that size maybe it can't expand i don't know but um if you open most things you can expand them um full screen um and they just go bigger basically you know what i mean so um i haven't found a way of doing that yet on here so um that is just one little thing for me again these are very little things and you know if if i was writing it which i'm not so um that's what i'd do so there you go that's the only little things i change on it is brilliant software i love the graphical display at the top it's you know really really good um i like that a lot um one thing i just want to say is when you uh, to activate it you have to click the cat on button so no matter what you've got set on the radio, as long as the radio is turned on, press the cat on button and it'll switch to this and the cat will work. Um, I don't know what the power on and power off do. When you press them, when you press power on, um, it sort of clicks something on the radio and does nothing. So I don't know what that does. Um, again, maybe somebody can tell me what that does, but I don't use it because... I've not had a need to use it, but it is it's brilliant software. Um, you know, I love it. Um, like I say, if I was rewriting it, you know, there, there will be, obviously, if anybody was rewriting it, there'd be things you want to change. I might add something like a volume control because I feed it back into the PC. So rather than using the Windows volume control um, and having to adjust it um, manually, you know, if there was a little volume control in there, um, I could adjust the volume, you know, because I do feed it back into the PC. So 
um, and then out through some speakers. So I could um, adjust the volume up and down and, uh, you know, change it that way. But not everybody would uh, would use that feature. You know, most people would probably just listen on the radio and control it from the, P, you know, the PC. But you have got that option, of course, these days of feeding feeding it in and outputting it through like like the way I do. I've got a little set of speakers on my desk and my radio is on the other desk. So I'd have to walk across the room to adjust the volume or something like that. So I decided to feed the output back through, um, mainly because I wanted to record things off the radio. You know, um, if I'm recording, um, you know, during a scan or something like that, you know, I could record what was happening on the radio on the PC with some software um so that's my reason for feeding the audio back into the pc um everybody's different but yeah it's brilliant software like i say not every single feature i've touched um so i don't know everything but uh it is good i really love the software um uh, so well done for the guy for writing it <laughs> because nobody else i don't think anybody else has wrote any software that works with this particular radio so i'm so glad i found this software i'm so glad it actually works um it, it is brilliant software and I, although i come from an it background i don't come from a programming background um i do personally do i say very basic programming um i have done powershell and i have done um some basic vb stuff um in the past but nothing uh, too complicated i've done php and stuff like that as well but um uh, nothing like writing a program like this so um yeah must have took a, a lot of time and effort to do so there you go that's the acufrg8800 software um let me know what you think about it if you're using it you know it's a brilliant piece of software and um yeah i might do another um review on it if some people get back to me and want to see some bits and pieces but i'll uh, put some videos up of doing a scan across the bands and things like that um maybe later it's daytime now so it's a bit quieter on um, some of the bands where i am now so hope you've enjoyed this video um thanks for watching everybody and i'll put something back online soon hopefully and if the author of this software is listening nice one brilliant software really enjoying using it. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Bye for now.